Okay, so we're going to start a little bit by working on talking about dimensioning and tolerances. Right, so when we talk about dimensions and units, they're used to describe the details of a part for construction. So they give us the size, the location, the function. There can be multiple views. If there are multiple views, then they should be on the view that gives the best detail of the feature. All right. Um, in the States now, we use both the SI unit and inches, um, the customary system. You have to be sure that on your drawings, you're very clear about the units you're using. And when you communicate, you need to be sure you're very clear about the units you're using. So be sure that you're being clear and specific there. So tolerance is the total amount of dimension can vary, and it's the difference between the maximum and the minimum limits. Um, so I've given you an example of a number. The basic dimension is the theoretical exact size or location of a feature. We show that, you can see in the upper right corner there, by enclosing that dimension in a box, all right? And you can see that that um, feature is supposed to be 40, whatever the units are, I would assume that's millimeters, um, since I didn't give you the whole drawing there. But that would be the basic dimension. A reference dimension is just for your information. It kind of represents intended sizes. It will not be used for inspection or the manufacturing process, right? So a reference dimension is kind of FYI, okay? And it's going to be shown like the 40 in the lower right-hand side for your information in parentheses. So it won't be used for manufacturing. It won't be used for the specifications. All right, so how we do dimension relationships, there are three ways. There's chain dimensioning, baseline dimensions, and direct dimensioning, All right? Chain dimensions means the tolerance between adjacent features is more important than the overall tolerance accumulation. And you see the top image shows you what chain dimensions look like. Baselines, the location of the features is controlled from a common reference point. All right, so you see that they all start from the far left-hand side of that piece. So the bottom is the same piece again, but it's direct dimensioning. And so it's used to control specific feature locations. So you'll see some start from each other, some start from the baseline, right? And that's called direct dimensioning. So we have chain, baseline, and direct. And you'll need to be able to identify those different types. All right, so let's talk just a little bit about tolerancing, okay? So modern manufacturing, mass production, requires that parts be made all over the world and then brought together for assembly without there being custom modifications. That's the definition of what we do now. So there's a cost of tolerance, all right? We could make parts perfectly but that's gonna have a ridiculous cost associated with it. Um, tolerances we use to control the variation existing on all manufactured parts. There'll be some that are in spec, some that are out. Remember, there are some reference dimensions that you would neither manufacture nor inspect for, right? Tolerance dimensions control the amount of variation each part of an assembly can have. Okay, and tolerances give us the truly interchangeable parts. They can be made by different companies. They can be made in different locations. They can be made by different people, but they fit functionally, even though they may not fit perfectly, right? Um, and the accuracy that is required depends on the functional requirements of the part. So remember, if you want smaller tolerances, the cost of manufacture is gonna go up. All right, so the, here are some tolerancing terms for you. We have a nominal size, a basic size, limits, a tolerance, and an allowance. So nominal size is the dimension we use to describe the general size. Basic size is like basic dimension. It's the theoretical size we use as a starting point for the application of all the tolerances. Limits are the max and the min shown by the tolerance dimension, okay? Tolerance is an allowable vari variance in the dimension, and the allowance is the minimum clearance or the maximum interference between parts 
or the tightest fit between two mating parts. Okay, so let's talk about limits. So the limits are the max and the min sizes. So if you look at the picture on the right, you'll see on that shaft, the limits on that shaft are 1.248 and 1.247, okay? There are limits as well on the hole in that block, okay? And you'll see that those are 1.250 and 1.251, okay? Allowance, right, the minimum clearance or the maximum interference, okay? The way we would figure out the allowance is we would take the smallest allowable shaft, I'm sorry, the largest allowable shaft, largest shaft, and the smallest hole, right? So the hole can be as small as 1.250, the shaft could be as large as 1.248. So the allowance would be 0 0.002, okay? All right, max material condition and least material condition, MMC and LMC. So max material would be when you use the most material. So for something like the shaft, that would be when it's its largest, okay? When would the block that has a hole cut in it be at its max material condition? That would be when the hole was its smallest, right? Because when the hole is the smallest, you'd removed less material. So the least material condition of a part would be when it contains the least amount of material. So for the shaft, it would be when it's its smallest. For the block, it would be when the hole is the largest. That'd be when you'd remove the most material. Okay, so expressing tolerances can be done in a couple of ways. You can do limits where you show the max and the min. You can do unilateral and you can do bi bilateral. So the limits on top there on the left and you see that what it shows is your max and your min. What I don't know there is what is the nominal size, right? I only know my max and my min there based on that figure. Unilateral shows the nominal size with a plus and a minus after. A unilateral variation or tolerance only lets there be variance in one direction. So you'll see that for this 1.878 and it's plus 0 0.000. So it can't be any bigger than that. It could be two mils smaller than that minus 0 0.002, okay? Bilateral would be, have a plus and a minus after, and allows there to be variation in both directions. While this example includes variation that is the same up and down, that's not necessarily the case. It could be larger in one direction, okay? So three types of ways we can express tolerances, limits, unilateral, and bilateral. So the direct limit method, the first method previously, is the ASME, American Society of Manufacturing Engineers preferred method, okay, for dimensioning. Plus and minus, okay, is the unilateral and bilateral again, and it includes the base plus the tolerances, all right? Remember that, again, we also could be talking about um, angles, not just um, lengths and widths. Okay, so here's an example. So let's assume this is in millimeters, okay, and we want to know the maximum size of the part, the minimum size of the part, when it will have the MMC, when it will have the LMC, um, and Go ahead, like I said, assume these are in millimeters. So go ahead and pause the video here so that you can figure those out, work that example out. Okay, so you're back. So I hope you've um, tried to figure these out. Um, and look, I realize there's a problem here. That should be 40.01, 20.01, 30.01, 10.01. I'll need to correct that. Okay, would be the maximum length, all right? The minimum length would be 
19.9, I'm sorry, those would both be 0.9, 29.9, and 19.9. Um, so those would be the maximum and minimum sizes, okay, if everything accumulated in one direction. When would this one have an MMC condition? When everything was its largest, okay? When would it have the LMC condition? When everything was smallest or shortest? Okay, what is the effective dimension and tolerance between the two holes? So why don't you pause right here to try to figure out um, what those are. All right, so you're back. Um, and so I hope you've thought about this a little bit. So in this case, the tolerances add directly. Okay, so if the hole to the far right was at 7.01 and the hole on the left was the smallest it could be, it would be at 2.99. Okay, if I subtracted those two, they could be a total of 4.02 apart. Okay, the closest they could be would be when the hole on the left was the furthest away and the hole on the right was the closest. So that would give us 6.99 minus 3.01 and that would be 3.98, okay? So the effective dimension and the tolerance there would be four plus or minus 0.02, all right? So see how the two tolerances on the individual dimensions are additive. We have greater variation Okay, because of an accumulation of tolerances. Okay, fits. So a clearance fit is when two tolerance mating parts always leave a space or a clearance. An interference fit occurs when two tolerance or mating parts always interfere in an assembly. An interference fit is going to require that there you use force, okay, to make the two pieces fit together. So if I looked at shaft A, okay, going into this hole, that would be a clearance fit. Here, if I looked at this larger shaft going into this hole, that would be an interference fit, okay? Those do not fit together naturally, All right? Okay, so tolerance for 100% interchangeability. Okay, so... The common requirement of a tolerance is that the parts be 100% interchangeable. So any random combination of parts, we have to be sure they're going to assemble. So what we do is we use the extreme conditions, the most difficult conditions for assembly to find the parts we don't know, all right? So how do we do that? We take internal dimensions at a minimum value, external dimensions at a maximum value. And we have this example. All right, this is in your book as well. So a radio, a car radio tuner knob is being assembled with a bearing and a spacer in the cavity. For the knob to turn freely, we have to have a 3 mil .003 clearance between the knob flange and the top of the cavity. So you have to find the tolerance X at the depth of the cavity. All right, so what we're trying to find here is what tolerance can we allow in this dimension here, okay, of the cavity. So let's look, okay, with the spacer. I need to know its dimension, so it's here and there. So that's 0.375, okay, plus or minus four. Then this bearing would be here and here. That'd be 0.25 plus or minus four. Then we have right here and there, okay? I'm sorry, here to here, okay? We have 0 0.125 plus or minus 0 0.003. And then finally we have the clearance, which is the overall here, all right? We know that this clearance has to be 0 0.003. All right. So how do we do this, okay? So I need to pick a sign convention and a zero. So I put zero at the bottom and it's positive going up and it's negative going down, All right? So what are my extreme conditions? For the spacer 
it's going to be max. For the bearing, it's going to be max. For the knob, it's going to be max. For the clearance, it's going to be the minimum. And for the cavity, it's going to be the minimum. Right? And what I'm trying to solve for is this X here. Okay? So how much space do I need? I take all these conditions. All right? So I need the max spacer, the max bearing, okay, the max knob plus the minimum clearance I need, okay, to be the total amount of space, and I add those up, all right? The minimum cavity size from here to here has to be 0.766 minus x, right? So how do I find x? I set those two things equal to get each other, okay? I set the cavity minimum size equal to the needed space. So when I do that, I get this equation. So I add all these up, move x to this side, then I subtract 0.766 minus the sum of these numbers, and I get x is equal to 0 0.002. So x is this dimension, plus or minus 0 0.002. Right? So now what I want you guys to do is I want you to work these problems, 17.7, 17.8, and 17.9. Hope this helps.